Private Prayers for the Morning and Evening and for Other Times of the Day by John Bradford. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. When you awake out of your sleep, pray thus. O most dear Father of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, whom none doth know but of thy gift, grant that, to the manifold great benefits of thy goodness given to me, this, which of all other is most, may be added, that, like as thou hast awaked my body from sleep, so thou wouldst thoroughly awake, yea, deliver my soul from the sleep of sin and darkness of this world, and that which now is awaked out of sleep, thou wouldst after death restore to life, for that is but sleep to thee, which is death to us. Dear God, I most heartily beseech and humbly pray thy goodness to make my body such a companion, or rather a minister of godliness to my soul in this present life, that in the life to come it may partake with the same everlasting happiness by Jesus Christ our Lord. Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall show light unto thee. Occasions to Meditate Here, call to mind the great mirth and blessedness of the everlasting resurrection. Also, remember to muse upon that most clear light and bright morning, and new clearness of our bodies, after the long darkness it hath been in. All then shall be full of joy. So soon as you behold the daylight, pray, O Lord, thou greatest and most true light, whence this light of the day and sun doth spring. O light, which doth lighten every man that cometh into this world. O light, which knoweth no night nor evening, but art always a midday most clear and fair, without whom all is most dark darkness, by whom all be most splendid. O thou wisdom of the eternal, Father of mercies, lighten my mind, that I may only see those things that please thee, and may be blinded to all other things. Grant that I may walk in thy ways, and that nothing else may be light and pleasant unto me. Lighten mine eyes, O Lord, that I sleep not in death, lest mine enemies say I have prevailed against him. Occasions to Meditate Muse a little how much the light and eye of the mind and soul are better than of the body, also that we care more for the soul to see well than for the body. Think that beasts have bodily eyes and therewith see, but men have eyes of the mind and therewith should see. When you arise, pray, Our first father tumbled down himself from a most excellent, high and honourable estate, into the mire of misery and deep sea of shame and mischief. But, O Christ, thou, putting forth thine hand, didst raise him up. Even so we, except we be lift up of thee, shall lie still for ever. O good Christ, our most gracious Redeemer, grant that as thou dost mercifully raise up now this my body and burden, even so I beseech thee, raise up my mind and heart to the light of the true knowledge of the love of thee, that my conversation may be in heaven where thou art. If thou be risen with Christ, think upon those things that be above. Occasions to meditate. Think something how foul and filthy that Adam's fall was by reason of sin, and so of every one of us from the height of God's grace. Again, think upon the great benefit of Christ, by whose help we do daily arise from our fallings. When you apparel yourself, pray, O Christ, clothe me with thine own self, that I may be so far from making provision for my flesh to fulfil the lusts of it, that I may clean put off all my carnal desires, and crucify the kingdom of the flesh in me. Be thou unto me a weed to warm me from catching the cold of this world, if thou be away from me, dear Lord, all things will be unto me forthwith cold, weak, dead, etc., 
but if thou be with me, all things will be warm, lively, fresh, etc. Grant, therefore, that as I compass this, my body, with this coat, so thou wouldst clothe me wholly, but specially my soul, with thine own self. Put upon you, as the elect of God, bowels of mercy, meekness, love, peace, etc. Occasions to meditate, call to mind a little how we are incorporate into Christ, again how he doth clothe us, nourish us under his wings, protection and providence, preserve us, etc. When you are made ready to begin the day with all, pray, O Almighty God and Most Merciful Father, Thou knowest and hast taught us also something to know, that the weakness of man and woman is great, and that without Thy grace they can neither do nor think any good thing. Have mercy upon me, I humbly beseech Thee, which am Thy most weak, frail, and unworthy child. O oh, be gracious and tender towards me, lighten my mind, that I may with pleasure look upon good things only. Inflame my heart with the love thereof, that I may carefully cover them. And at the last, by thy gracious conducting, may happily attain them through Jesus Christ our Lord. I, distrusting altogether mine own weakness, commend and offer myself, both soul and body, into thy hands. Thy loving spirit lead me forth unto the land of righteousness. Conjutations meet to begin the day with. Think first that man consisteth of soul and body, and that the soul is from heaven, heavenly, firm, and immortal, but the body is from the earth, earthly, frail, and mortal. Again, think that though by reason of sin, wherein you are conceived and born, the parts of the soul which do understand and desire be so corrupt that, without special grace to both parts, you can neither know nor love any good thing in God's sight, much less then do that is good. Yet this notwithstanding think that you are regenerate by Christ's resurrection, which your baptism requireth you to believe, and therefore have both those parts something reformed both to know and to love, and therefore to do also some good in the sight of God through Christ, for whose sake our poor doings are accepted for good, the evil and infirmity cleaving thereunto, not being imputed through faith. Think that by faith which is God's seed, for they which believe are born of God and made God's children, given to those that be ordained to eternal life. Think, I say, that by faith you receive more and more the spirit of sanctification through the use of God's word and sacraments and earnest prayer to illuminate your minds, understanding, judgment and reason, and to bow, form, frame, and inflame your affections with love and power to that that good is, and therefore use you the means aforesaid accordingly. Think that by this spirit you are, through faith, coupled to Christ as a lively member, and so to God, and as it were made one with him, and by love which springeth out of this faith, you are made one also with all that be of God, and so you have fellowship with God and all good men that ever were or shall be. In all the good that God and all his saints have or shall have, think that as by faith and love, through the Spirit of God, you are now entered into this communion, the blessedness whereof no tongue can express. So after this life you shall first in soul, and in the last day in body also, enjoy forever the same society most perfectly, which now is but begun in you. Think then of your negligence, that doth so little care for this your happy estate. Think upon your ingratitude to God for making you, redeeming you, calling you, and so lovingly adopting you. Think upon your folly in fantasizing so much earthly and bodily pleasures. Think upon your deafness and blindness, which hear not God nor see him, he calling you so diligently by his works, word, and sacraments, think upon your frowardness, which will not be led of God and his spirit, think upon your forgetfulness and inconsideration of your heavenly estate, how your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, your members are the members of Christ, the whole world and all things therein are your own. 
Therefore say unto your soul, O my soul, arise, follow God, contemn this world, purpose well, and pursue it, long for the Lord's coming, be ready, and watch that he come not upon the unawares. And for so much as you must live to God's pleasure, see the vocation and state of your life whereunto God hath called you, and pray to God for grace, knowledge, and ability to take the most profitable things in hand, well to begin, better to go on, and best of all to end the same to God's glory and the profit of your brethren, and think that time lost wherein you speak or do not, or at the least think not, something to God's glory and the commodity of your brethren. When you go forth of the doors, pray, Now must I walk among the snares of death, stretched out of Satan and of his mischievous ministers in the world, carrying with me a friend to them both, and a foe to myself, even this body of sin and sinful flesh. O grand Captain Christ, lead me and guide me, I beseech thee, defend me from the plagues and subtleties whereof I am endangered. Grant that I may take all things that hap as I should do, only upon thee set thou mine eyes, that I may so go forwards in thy ways, as by no things I be hindered, but rather furthered, and may refer all things to thee accordingly. Show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy paths. Consider how vainly the most part of men be occupied, how they do trouble and cumber themselves diversely, how they meddle with many things, thereby much alienating their minds from the knowledge and cogitation of that which they should most esteem, and so become a let and an offence to others. As in going abroad you will see that your apparel be seemly in the sight of men, so see how seemly you appear in the sight of God. When you are going any journey, pray, This our life is a pilgrimage, from the Lord we came, and to the Lord we make our journey, albeit through thievish places and painful, yea, perilous ways, which our cruel enemies have and do prepare for us, now more than stark blind by reason of sin. O Christ, which art a most true loadsman and guide, and thereto most expert, faithful, and friendly, do thou put out thine hand, open mine eyes, Make thy highways known unto me, which way thou didst first enter into out of this corruptible life, and hast fenced the same for us to immortality. Thou art the way, lead us unto the Father by thyself, that all we may be one with him, as thou and he together be one. Show me the way that I should walk in, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Or pray thus, Merciful Father, Thou art wont to send to thy servants and men of simple hearts thine angels to be their keepers, and as it were guides, as elder brethren, to watch upon thy weak children. So didst thou to young Tobias, to Jacob, to Abraham's servant, to Joshua, etc. O good God, though we be much unlike to them, so many are our sins, yet for thine own goodness' sake, Send thine holy angels to pitch their tents about us, from Satan and his slaves to hide and defend, to carry us in their hands, that we come not into further danger than thou throughout wilt deliver us for thine own sake. His angels are ministers for them that be heirs of salvation. Satan sleepeth not, but seeketh always to destroy us. Think something how we are strangers from our country, from our home, from our original, I mean from God. Again, think upon your madness that do linger and loiter so gladly in this our journey and pilgrimage. Also, how foolish we are to fantasy things which we cannot carry with us, and to contemn conscience which will always be a companion to us, to our joy if it be good, but to our shame and sorrow if it be evil and corrupt. Finally, how unnatural we are, that so little desire to be at our home, to be with our only father, master, fellows and friends, etc. When you are about to receive your meat, pray, This is a wonderful mystery of thy work, O maker and governor of the world. 
that thou dost sustain the lives of men and beasts with these meats. Surely this power is neither in the bread nor food, but in thy will and word, by which word all things do live and have their beings. Again, how great a thing is it that thou art able yearly to give sustenance to so many creatures. This is spoken of by thy prophet in thy praises. All things look up to thee, and thou givest them meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand and fillest with thy blessing every living thing. These doubtless are wonderful works of thine almightiness. I therefore heartily pray thee, O most liberal Lord and faithful Father, that, as thou by meat, through thy word, doth minister life to these our bodies, even so by the same word, with thy grace, do thou quicken our souls, that both in soul and body we may please thee, till this our mortal carcass shall put on immortality, and we shall need no more any other food but thee only, which then will be all in all. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Bless the Lord, O my soul, which feedeth and filleth thy mouth with good things. Think a little how great God's power is that made us. Also think how great his wisdom is to preserve us. But most of all, think how many things are given to our use, how wonderful it is to give us life. But most of all, to propagate to immortality the life of the soul by his only beck. Last of all, think that God, by his providence for thy body, would have thee to confirm thy faith of God's providence for thy soul. In the mealtime, pray, O most liberal distributor of thy gifts, which givest us all kind of good things to use, thou being pure, givest pure things, grant to me thy grace, that I misuse not these thy gracious gifts given to our use and profits. Let us not love them, because thou dost give us these things, but rather let us love thee, because thou givest them, and for that they be necessary for us for a season, till we come unto thee. Grant us to be conversant amongst thy gifts soberly, purely, temperately, holily, because thou art such a one. So shall not we turn that to the poison of our souls, which thou hast given for the medicine of our bodies, but using thy benefits, thankfully, we shall find them profitable both to soul and body. Think that the meats and drinks set before you are given to you to use and not to abuse. Think they are given to profit and not to hurt you. Think that they are not given to you alone, but unto others also by you. In eating and drinking, think that you do but feed the worms, Remember the poor prisoners, sick, etc., as though you were in their case. Think upon the food of your soul, Christ's body broken and his blood shed. Desire the meat that lasteth forever. Work for it. Christ's meat was to do his Father's will. After your meat, pray thus. By corporal meats, thou dost sustain our corporal daily life, ready otherwise to perish, the which surely is a great work, but yet this is much greater, more profitable, and more holy, that thy grace, O Jesus Christ, doth keep away from us the death of the soul. For this life we ought much to thank thee, and because thou dost prolong it with thy good gifts, we most heartily praise thee. Albeit this life is but the way to eternal life, which we beseech thee for thy death's sake, that thou wilt give us, and so shall we not only give thee, as we can, thanks in time for temporal things, but also eternal thanks for eternal things. O grant us these our desires, for thy mercy's sake. Amen. Think now that God hath given thee this, his blessing of meat, etc., and thereto time that thou mightest, as repent. So seek his glory and the commodity of thine brethren. Therefore go thereabout, but first pray for grace well to begin, and again consider how thou hast been partaker of other men's labours, as of the husbandmen's, the millers, the bakers, the brewers, the butchers, the cooks, etc. See therefore that thou be not a drone bee, but rather such a one as may help the hive. If God have thus fed thy body, 
which he loveth not but for thy soul's sake, how can it be then but that he will be much more ready to feed thy soul? Therefore take a courage to thee, and go to him for grace accordingly. Cogitations for about the midday time. As the body is now environed on all sides with light, so see that thy mind be. As God giveth thee thus plentifully this corporal light, so pray him that he will give thee the spiritual light. Think that as the sun is now most clear, so shall our bodies be in the day of judgment. As now the sun is come to the highest, and therefore will begin to draw downward, so is there nothing in the world so perfect and glorious, which, when it is at the full, will not decrease and so wear away. When you come home again, pray, There is nothing, O Lord, more like to thy holy nature than acquired mind. Thou hast called us out of the troublesome disquietness of the world into that thy quiet rest and peace, which the world cannot give, being such a peace as passeth all men's understanding. Houses are ordained for us that we might get us into them from the injury of weather, from the cruelty of beasts, from disquietness of people, and from the toils of the world. O gracious Father, grant that through thy great mercy my body may enter into this house from outward actions, but so that it may become buxom, footnote, i.e. compliant, obedient, and footnote, and obedient to the soul, and make no resistance there against, that in soul and body I may have a godly quietness and peace to praise thee. Amen. Peace be to this house and to all that dwell in the same. Think what a return and how merry a return it will be to come to our eternal, most quiet and most happy home. Then will be all grief gone away, whatsoever here is pleasant and joyful, the same is nothing but a very shadow in comparison, etc. At the sun going down, pray, How unhappy are they, O Lord, on whom thy sun goeth down and giveth no light, I mean thy grace which is always clear as the midday. Dark night unto them is the midday, which depart from thee. In thee is never night, but always daylight most clear. This corporal sun hath his courses, now up, now down, but thou, dear Lord, if we love thee, art always one. O oh, that this block and veil of sin were taken away from me, that there might be always clear day in my mind. Occasions to meditate. Think that as we are not sorry when the sun goeth down, because we know it will rise again, even so we should not sorrow for death, where through the soul and body do part asunder, for they shall eftsoons return and come together again in most glorious wise. So long as the sun is up, wild beasts keep their dens, foxes their burrows, owls their holes, etc., but when the sun is down, then come they abroad, so wicked men and hypocrites keep their dens in the gospel, but, it being taken away, then swarm they out of their holes like bees, as this day doth teach. When the candles be light, pray. Most thick and dark clouds do cover our minds, except thy light, O Lord, do drive them away. Thy Son, O most wise worker, is, as it were, a firebrand to this world. Thy wisdom, whereby light cometh to both soul and body, is a firebrand to the spiritual world. After day, when the night cometh, Thou hast given for the remedy of darkness a candle. After sin, for the remedy of ignorance, thou hast given thy doctrine, which thy dear Son hath brought unto us. O thou, that art the author and master of all truth, and art the true light, make us so to see, that the dimness of our minds may be driven clean away. Lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us, and send joy and gladness into our hearts. Thy word is a lantern to my feet, and a light unto my paths. Occasions to meditate. Think that the knowledge which God giveth unto us by the candlelight, whereby we see those things in this night of our bodies which are expedient for us, should make us to wish much more for this doctrine of God and spiritual light of our souls, and when we get it, the more to esteem it and diligently to embrace it. Again, that 
as all would be horror without candlelight, so there is nothing but mere confusion where God's word taketh not place. When you make yourself unready, pray, This our life and weak-knit body by reason of sin, by little and little, will be dissolved, and so shall be restored to the earth from whence it was taken. Then will be an end of this vanity which by our folly we have wrought to ourselves. O most meek father, so do thou untie me, for thou art he that hast knit these our weak members together, that I may perceive myself to be loosed and dissolved, and so may remember both of whom I was made, and also whither I must go, lest I be had unprovided under thy tribunal and judgment seat. Occasions to meditate. Put off the old man with his lusts and concupiscence. Be content with Joseph to put off thy prison apparel, that thou mayst put on new. Think that, as we do willingly put off our garments because we shall receive them again when the night is past, so we should not unwillingly forsake our bodies when God by death shall call us, because we shall receive them again in the resurrection of the just. When you enter into your bed, pray, the day is now ended, men give themselves to rest in the night, and so this life finished, we shall rest in death. Nothing is more like this life than every day, nothing more like death than sleep, nothing more like to our grave than our bed. O Lord, our keeper and defence, grant that I now, laying me down to rest, being unable to keep myself, may be preserved from the crafts and assaults of the wicked enemy, and grant further that when I have run the race of this life, thou wouldst of thy mercy call me unto thee, that I may live and watch with thee for evermore. And now, gracious God, give me to take my rest in thee, and bring to pass that thy goodness may be even in sleep before mine eyes, that sleeping I be not absent from thee, but may have my dreams to draw me unto thee, and so both soul and body may be kept pure and holy for ever. I will lay me down in peace and take my rest." Think that as this troublesome day is now past, and night come, and so rest, bed, and pleasant sleep, which maketh most excellent princes and most poor peasants alike, even so after the tumults, troubles, temptations, and tempests of this life, they that believe in Christ have prepared for them an haven and rest most pleasant and joyful. As you are not afraid to enter into your bed and to dispose yourself to sleep, so be not afraid to die, but rather prepare yourself to it. Think that now you are nearer your end by one day's journey than you were in the morning. When you feel sleep to be coming, pray, O Lord Jesus Christ, my watchman and keeper, take me to thy care, grant that my body sleeping, my mind may watch in thee, and be made merry by some sight of that celestial and heavenly life, wherein thou art the King and Prince, together with the Father and the Holy Ghost. Thy angels and holy souls be most happy citizens. O purify my soul, keep clean my body, that in both I may please thee, sleeping and waking forever. Amen. <laughs>